I think with the first um, video, uh, you can see the frustration in, in, his, in his eyes. You can see, you can see that in his demeanor. Um, I'll be honest, when he was reaching into his pants, he did come across as a bit threatening because you don't know what's in there. Um, so again, um, that's probably uh, a criticism of, of myself really on my expectations because uh, someone of that age bracket dressed like that, you're probably expecting a weapon. Mm. When the drumsticks came out, um, I felt a little bit silly if I'm honest, mm. but you can see how potentially he could be at risk if, uh, if um, people didn't allow him the opportunity to pull out whatever he's got. And if I'm honest, when she talked about the actual experience, um, it made me angry as well. But the fact that they felt victimized, um, there's a lack of consideration for the time they did the warrant. Um, obviously, as I know as an officer, as part of the work we do, we'd have to do intelligence checks. So you'd probably known that there's a small child in, in, in the house, especially during lockdown and everyone's been so careful around touching things. So I think that was completely disrespectful. Um, I got the impression, uh, or it came across to me as well, that they felt dehumanised, um, angry. And for me, all I kept thinking was the trauma that that's left behind. That, that's the bit that really got to me. Like, um, and that's why I, I, I role so difficult to try and change people's perspectives that have been through that. For the third one, um, again, he came across as a little, uh, in the way he spoke, he's, he's just down and fed up. Uh, that's the way he came across. Uh, and again, for me, it's a lack of cultural competence. I mean, did you have to arrest him on need day? Was it was that pressing um, in front of family and friends? I don't know. Uh, again, that makes me angry. Um, and for the last one, to be honest, it looks like a typical normal lad on, on, on the black. Um, but again, it makes me angry that, you know, because I've, I've been through that. I, I was first stopped search when I was 13, so I, I know the feeling. And especially when you've never been involved in any crime, uh, and I haven't got any crime to my record, uh, but you're constantly getting blamed for things and you don't have a voice. So I've put on there annoyed and no voice because it's almost like you've done it because you match the description, but the description a lot of the time is very, very vague. So I get the frustration and I can get how someone like the, the last individual will grow up to, to, to really hate police and hate the establishment. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts. Thanks. I guess for me, one of the questions, I want, a series of questions I ask you first is like, how did the videos and the images of the young people, how did it make you feel as an individual and also as a police officer? It brought back memories for me. Um, I, I grew up, so um, not, not many people know that when I, when I was growing up, I actually lived on a, a road called the road where we had a lot of prostitutes at the time. They used to sit Amsterdam style in the windows and, I kind of grew up around a lot of the violence and a lot of the problems. That's why when I said to you, um, when people dress a certain way, and if you don't know them and they're walking up to you with their hands on there, normally it means something's going yeah. down. So naturally that's how I, I react to things. But it brought back a lot of negative memories because I didn't want to join the police. I didn't want to join the police, I'll be honest with you. I hated the police growing up because I had that growing up. Then we had 9-11 happen and that had a massive impact on me and my family. Um, I remember going for a job interview in Broad Street, I just finished university, graduated. My brother's waiting outside, he had a Palestinian kafir on. I came out three officers on top of him, because he wouldn't give his name. And my dad always wanted me to join the police. I don't understand why to this day, um, because he came over in the 60s, he had a very negative experience with police. They used to beat you back then. Um, so he kind of came through Liverpool and then kind of settled in Birmingham. But so I did it really for him and I came close to leaving twice because of police culture and, and the way it is in the actual organisation. Um, do I regret stopping that? No, because I've worked some great roles, it's opened doors for me. A lot of the good people in my life today are from the police, so I can't, I can't complain. But there's still a lot of bad. And the reality is um, those videos brought back a lot of negativity. Um, and I felt angry watching it. I felt angry because I know exactly what that lad's going through um, Through no fault of his own He just happens to be a certain color dressed a certain way in a certain area and we over police certain areas as well Because the police where I grew up they won't come to engage like Ryan is talking about and talk to me about how, how are you? Uh, we're gonna have a bit of football. We you know, we'll talk nice things. They'll only ever come into enforce And I'll be honest with you. I, I kind of blessed with my upbringing really because I got to see a different side 
to like prostitutes to some of the criminals because they're people at the end of the day. Right. So it's kind of made me who I am.